Hello, my name is John McDermott. I'm an instructor with Survival in the Bush Incorporated, and I'm here with Dr. Gino Ferry, who's our education director. Uh, Gino, what can you tell us about your experience with survival? How did you get involved in survival, and, and what did you learn? When I was 15 years of age, I was lost. I was lost in the middle of nowhere in the Bruce Peninsula. It was a horrible experience. Bugs everywhere. I didn't know where I was, what I was doing. Hopelessly lost. The only way I got out was uh, an individual by the name of Wilmer Najwan found me and guided me out. It was the most traumatic experience of my life up to that point. Yeah, I can imagine. And, and this triggered off uh, a, a long research on your part as to um, who gets lost and, and what did you learn about survivors and um, who it is that ends up in these situations and why? Interesting question, John, because based on that experience, I started reading some uh, textbooks and some other literature on survival. And I noticed that some of the literature, when they talked about survival, had nothing to do with what I experienced. It made it sound like it was a pleasant experience, and yet I knew it was a horrible experience. And speaking to Wilmer, he told me it's not a pleasant thing to go through. So I started reading more and more, and I realized that there seemed to be four philosophies that look on wilderness survival. One philosophy is basically aimed at individuals that never leave their living room. And they look on survival as being a very pleasant experience. These people have never experienced bugs, for example. Another philosophy seems to be centered on lightweight camping. And these individuals say that unless you have all the tools you, you need on a, uh, that you use on a camping trip, you can't possibly survive. The fourth philosophy seems to be centered on spiritual reawakening that you'll survive if you become one with the tree, one with the bug, one with the animal. Again, it didn't fit well with the experience that I underwent. And then the last one that says you've got to do whatever it takes to survive, and it's not a very pleasant experience. Those are the four philosophies that uh, I came across in my literature. I followed that up by actually doing my doctoral dissertation on, on uh, survival. I was able to draw a profile of the uh, uh, person who gets lost and is interesting on who gets lost. This is quite quite the uh, mind blower because I found out that 56% and this is out of a, a group of 2300 cases 56% of the people that were uh, that are lost tend to be hunters 24% tend to be anglers and you say how is that possible? How does a fisherman get lost? Well mm -hmm. if you're paddling in the bay and the fog sets in one island looks like another island you're lost interestingly enough 12 percent are trappers and why is that now they no longer use dogs and your skidoo breaks down your snow machine breaks down you're now technically missing eight percent are patrons of the parks these are people who go hiking and interestingly enough that number is really changing especially in the last decade are you finding uh, more people are using the outdoors uh, and how are the statistics changing now? You know, hunters are generally very experienced guys and you're finding a large percentage of them are getting lost. But with so many new people coming up and using the park, how are the statistics changing? What I'm finding, and the stats bear this out, if, for example, you walked the Bruce Trail when you were 20, 21, 22, and you were able to do a section from point A to point B in five hours, hey, that was a great experience, I'll go back. Now I'm in my 70s and I tried the same stretch and I can't do it, so you're stuck out there. The other, uh, the other problem is that individuals that use parts of the trail system just aren't prepared. They don't bring any water, don't bring any food, they don't have proper gear, they don't have proper footwear, and they get stranded and they get lost out, out there. So we have a spike on the number of people uh, that are patrons and less on the uh, group that were under the uh, the uh, hunter uh, category. From your experience, what kind of things will someone who finds themselves lost and in a survival situation, what kind of things will they experience? John, you don't even want to go there because the 2,300 people that I interviewed I remember being in the hospital room and I triggered, one of my words triggered the experience, he started to cry and he covered his head. 
he was stating things like, I can't do it anymore, I can't go on. He was lost for seven days, he was a complete basket case. Most of the people that I interviewed were no longer in their living room, the kitchen, or the hospital. They were back in the bush. When I was interviewing them, they were suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. It was just ugly, ugly to, to, to bear. And this is why I, I, I wrote this book. I wrote this book because I wanted to research more to the extent that I experienced. I went into the bush with one of my mentors, Bill Parker, an Anishinaabek individual, and he took me out on the Albany River system, and we spent 20, I spent 29 days of sheer hell and misery. What goes through your mind the first 10 days, you're all right. This next 10 days, I wrote in my, my notes, so I could see that my mind wasn't working properly. And the last nine days was sheer hell. It was as if my mind was giving up on me. I was acting strictly out of impulse. I wasn't thinking, I wasn't rationalizing. Then I knew I had to put something on paper to write, write the book. To the extent when I came out, I spent I don't know how many months receiving help, psychiatric help, to get over my condition. Yeah. If someone finds themselves lost, uh, a day hiker, or anyone who's out in the bush, what would their, or what should their priorities be? Again, it's a very good question. Um, and it's interesting you ask that, because I asked that question to people who never lost, and they said, well, find your way out. The ones that I asked that had been lost said, admit that you're lost. Take stock of what you have on you. Do not travel anywhere. Don't do anything else. Just sit down, calm down, calm yourself down. Once you have that done, go to the second state. Don't. Also, if you have water, drink it. Constantly drink water. If anybody needs first aid, apply first aid. So that's on the scope of admitting that you're lost. Second is basically building a shelter or starting a fire, one or the other. They're interchangeable at this point, depending on the season. And finally, making certain that you are fine by not wandering all over the place. Because for every hour that you wander in a wilderness setting, you've doubled the search area for searchers to find you. So the third uh, and uh, the fourth stage is basically making yourself found by building distress signals of some kind to attract people to find you. I imagine that would be a very hard thing to accept if you're an experienced outdoorsman or you've spent a lot of years hiking or whatever to accept that you're lost and to be able to step back and, and stop what you're doing and, and reassess the situation. There's a chap by the name of Rodriguez and he delved in the very point and he found that the more experienced people tend to be the ones that become extremely confused because they've never been faced with that situation. They're so arrogant in their, in their thought that they take it for granted and just uh, don't admit that they're lost and they simply keep wandering. So there's, there's your irony. The most experienced ones tend to be the ones that get lost because they refuse to admit that they're lost. It, it, adding to that, if you think that you're able to, to start a fire under controlled circumstances, and you can do it when you're highly stressed, it doesn't happen. I'll give you an example. So John, you work with your hands. I know you, you're a woodworker. Imagine you have a two by eight, eight feet long. You put it on the ground. You can walk on the ground, Easy. no problem. What happens if I took that board and put it 100 meters in the air? Fear would kick in. Exactly, and that's what happens in a survival situation. Fear kicks in, your reptilian brain takes over, you just can't think anymore. That's why it's crucial. Stay put, admit that you're lost. Any final thoughts or advice for those that might find themselves in that situation? Don't rely on your GPS. Don't rely on technology. Think of your survival kit, and that's your brain. Think it through, take a survival course from somewhere, and understand that you will be going through a horrible experience. Forget the first three philosophies, understand that you're going to be going through hell on earth. Okay. Thank you, Gino. You're welcome.